Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Hope you guys are having a fabulous holiday season out there right now. And also welcome back to episode two of our stretchy header collection view tutorial. In today's lesson, we are going to continue where we left off in the last video. And basically, I showed you guys how to create this application over here that contains our custom image view at the very top here. And then on the bottom, we have our 18 black collection view cells. Now, the target that we're trying to achieve for our application is to make sure our header enlarges and also blurs out kind of like the finished version of our application on the right side here, right? And as you drag up, that's kind of the effect we're trying to go for. Now, the blurring right here might be a little bit confusing to follow in today's lesson. So what I've gone ahead and done for you guys is to prepare this over here. And this is much easier to see what's going on. As I drag down, you'll see that our header enlarges in size. And as you drag up, that is what it does. Okay, so in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to build out a custom collection view flow layout component that allows you to enlarge and also customize the attributes on your header component at the very top of your controller. So this is always a little bit confusing and it's also somewhat overwhelming if you're not familiar with what a custom flow layout component does. So I'll try to show you how to do this one step at a time here. And uh, basically our layout is inside of this stretchy header controller file. So let me run this guy and you can kind of see we are setting up the collection view layout by modifying the section insets to give it some padding on the left, the right, top and also the bottom down here. So that's currently what's going on. And in addition to providing these customizations, you can also provide a totally custom layout for your collection view controller that allows it to do that. And you might be asking me, well, how exactly do we do that, right? Well, let me show you how to construct a new group here that will contain our layout. So let me just call this custom and let me say, okay, here, and inside of this guy, I'm going to create a new file. And inside of here, let's subclass a UI collection view flow layout. So make sure to do that. And I'm going to call this the stretchy uh, header layout. So let's just give it a name right here. Hit enter, make sure you create it somewhere inside of your project. And here we go. We have our stretchy header layout. And you might be asking, what exactly do we want to do inside of here? Well. We want to see, we want to modify the attributes of our header component somehow. And the way that you do this is to override the layout attributes for elements in rect, this really, really long method here. And you can provide some custom attributes, right? But instead of doing that, we are just going to override this and provide the same implementation by using the super call of this. So let me just set up some of the foundation code just so that we can see what's going on. I'm going to call super layout attributes for elements in rect, and we will use this rect here. And that looks pretty good. And we need to return the actual layout attributes like that because it expects you to do so. And now that we have our stretchy header layout, how do we use it, right? Well, we are going to go back into our app delegate file. Whenever you're setting up your stretchy header controller guy, you can provide it with a custom layout. So instead of using this guy, we are going to use our stretchy header layout instead. And now that you have your layout set up, your collection view is going to use it. And as you drag up and down like that, you can see that it behaves exactly like it did before. Nothing is changing with the attributes because we haven't exactly modified the attributes just yet. So let me go ahead and show you how we can modify the header inside of this method called uh, layout attributes for elements. And let's see, how exactly do I want to do this? Well, you can actually execute a for each loop on this array called layout attributes. And inside of here, let's just hit enter one more time. Inside of this guy, for each one of my attributes, I'm going to call this uh, attributes like so. And inside of here, I can test some things on this attributes here. So let's copy and paste that there. You can test a lot of things such as the alpha, the bounds, the center, the frame, and then the index path here. 
And then somewhere down below, you have this represented element kind. And if I test it to be equal to the collection view element kind section header, I'm going to modify the attributes. So here is the header code, and you can say attributes.frame. Set this guy equal to something arbitrary like 0, 0, 100, and 100 for width and height. And once you do this, you'll see that for the header that you rendered out at the top of your collection view, it's going to now take in this custom rect that you define. If you drag up and down, you'll see that it starts off at 0, 0 in the origin top left, and it obviously has a width and height of 100, right? So that's kind of how it works, and we're going to use this to modify the actual frame of our image view, and it's going to expand as we drag down somehow. So let me show you how this is going to work by giving this guy the proper width here. So this width, I'm going to replace it down here. And the width, I'm going to grab it from the collection view that belongs on our layout. This might be a little bit confusing, but we have something called a collection view that we can access on our layout object. And uh, this guy is an optional, and it's really hard to deal with optionals, as I'm sure you guys are all fully aware of. So instead of dealing with optional, let's just use a garlet to unwrap it. Uh, collection view. Otherwise, we just simply return. OK, so collection view, we're going to use that. We have access to the frame and also the width, which is from here all the way to the right side there. So having said that, we are going to use the width here. And the attributes, you can actually access the original uh, frame height just like so. OK, so I'm going to run that now. You'll see that the actual header that you rendered out will now be the original width like so because we're grabbing it from the collection view. You can grab it from the actual attributes as well if you wanted to do so. But uh, that's kind of how it works. And as you drag down, everything still looks pretty darn good. All right, so now that you guys have a pretty decent understanding of what exactly you can do inside of this method called layout attributes for elements, I would like to now move on to tracking the offset of our collection view as we drag down on it like so. And we're going to use the offset to enlarge the image view like that. So the easiest way of capturing the offset is to use the collection view and you can access the content offset like that. And you also have a property called Y on it. OK, so I'm going to say let content, so content offset Y equals all of that. And what I want to do is to show you how you can just print it out like so. And whenever I run this application now, you'll see this being printed out right at the beginning of our application because it needs to capture the layout attributes once to lay out like that. And then as you drag it up and down, you'll see that you have a value of 215 being printed out like so. OK, so that isn't exactly what I want. And I actually want to print out the values every time I drag down like that. And uh, while it's changing, I want to modify the frame somehow. So the way to fix this problem is to actually uh, invalidate the bounds. So I'm going to show you how to do that by saying should invalidate layout. And I'm going to, for the code here, let's just return the value of true. So basically what's happening is as you change the bounds of your collection view as you drag up and down like that, you want to make sure you invalidate the layout so that it recalculates everything inside of this method here. So what you'll see is as you drag up and down like that, you can drag all the way down and you'll arrive to the value of something like 110.5 on the bottom over there. And then as you let go, it kind of goes back down to zero like that. OK, so that looks pretty good. As you drag up on your collection view, you'll see that the values kind of stay in the positive range like so. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just drag it back into the origin like so. OK, so that's kind of where I'm at right now. And what I would like to do is to use this content offset Y here in conjunction with the height over here to provide a custom size for my header. So that might sound a little bit confusing. But the magic is going to occur on this one line here. I'm going to use height equals attributes dot frame dot height. And I'm going to try to subtract the content offset Y like so. And I'll replace the height down here 
with that variable. And I'm going to run now. Uh, you might be asking why I'm subtracting it, but basically as I'm dragging down, the content offset is going into the negative direction. So right now, as you drag down like so, you'll see that your header view is going to enlarge like so. All right, so dragging down will enlarge the actual frame of the attributes, and that's kind of why your image view expands like that. It's actually getting taller and taller as you drag down on your collection view. Okay, so that's the first step in getting the image to enlarge. And the last thing you really need to do is to make sure that as the collection view is being dragged downwards, the header needs to stay in the corner like that. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset the Y value also by content offset. So let me just replace it there and run my code again. You'll see the effect that this will provide inside of your collection view. So as you drag down, you'll see that the offset or the content offset Y is going to balance out the shifting of the header view downwards back up to the origin over there. It's basically trying to move, but this value is counteracting the weight of which it's kind of going downwards like that. And that's kind of why it's being stuck at zero. Okay, so that's a brief explanation as to what's going on. And hopefully the math over here is pretty easy to follow. Uh, the last thing that you have to fix is whenever you drag your collection view upwards now, it kind of does this weird thing where the header kind of shifts over and it actually disappears somewhere over here. And the reason why it does that is because, well, whenever you're dragging in the positive direction, you'll see that you're in the range of 87 here. You probably don't want to kind of modify the attributes frame. So what I mean is, I am going to use a test on the content offset. So if content offset Y, if this guy is greater than zero, I'll just simply return. And uh, basically whenever I'm dragging upwards, it's not going to go through any of this math down below. And that's going to allow me to just drag up like that. When I drag downwards and let go, the effect of enlarging our image view is going to come into play just like that. All right. So again, this is the simple math. There are a lot of different things that you have to worry about or take into account. And one of the important things that you have to be concerned with is the fact that this only works for one header instead of your collection view. So if you have multiple headers, you do have to be wary of what's going on. So for example, you can actually test, let's see, if the element kind is the header and also if the attributes, so attributes dot index path dot section is equal to equal zero or equal equals zero there, you can now run your code. And this is only going to affect the very first header inside of your collection view. You can see that it still does the same thing. And if you have multiple headers, you do have to watch out for that. Alrighty, everybody, that's going to wrap it up for today's lesson on how we can create a custom UI collection view flow layout component. I know it's always pretty confusing if you're running into new libraries like this. So make sure to download the source code, which is available down in the description below if you want to fully understand what's going on. If you want to support the channel and also if you want to learn more about Swift development, make sure to check out the couple of courses that we have down below as well. The latest course is on Tinder, Firestore, and VVM. You're going to be able to learn a lot about how to develop an iOS application using this architecture approach. All right, that's going to be it for today's video. I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye, guys.